Good morning, Father, Mother Sophia, and Brother Jesus. Good morning. We are delighted to be present here with all of us together to share that love that we have in union with you. You created us this way, and we want to always be with you in that same way and love. So please be with us this morning during this time, this special time, but open us very much to become aware of what needs to be changed within each of us so that we become, can become more who we truly are, your love. And this we ask in your all's holy name, amen. Amen. Okay. Well, once again, we continue with the thoughts of Neil Watts in his book, God says, you have me all wrong. And so there's some things that we need to really understand. So he's, I start off today with saying, who am I? And the response is, I am a spiritual being a three-part being made up of body, mind, and soul. Each part of my tripart being has a function and a purpose. As I come to understand each of those functions, each aspect of me begins to, to more efficiently serve its purpose in my life. Who am I? One thing that we have to remember, we are not our body. There's a difference between we, the person, the body, the soul, and the spirit. The body, soul, and spirit are the instruments in which we, the person, dwell, and we use those instruments in order to share ourself, we, the person. And so, while we are alive on this earth, our body is the instrument, primarily. And our spirit, our person, we the person, I the person, use my body in all different kinds of ways to share who I am. And that sharing is some way or other a sharing of different degrees of love. Because... I am love. Okay. My spiritual being is an individuation of divinity's spiritual being, an expression of God's essence, a singularization of the singularity. There is no separation between my physical being and that of God. Nor is there any difference between us, except as in proportion. My being, my soul, my spirit, I the person, I am the individuation of God, the divine. Everything is God because he is infinite and nothing can exist outside of God. Therefore, everything dwells in God, in the divinity, and everything as a result is also divinity. However, 
there is that singularization of the singularity. I like the way he uses those two words, singularization and singularity. Singularity is God, only one. The um, sing singularization are all the different aspects of that divine essence that are all different. Not in different in any essential thing, but they're different only in proportion. We are only existing in the size our body exists. That proportion is tremendously different than the proportion, proportion of God because God is infinite. It's everywhere. We're only this little bitty bit. And keeping that in mind also brings forth the fact that there is no way there could be such a, a place as hell where we are sent by God for punishment. Who am I, what am I able to do that is so evil? I let the little bitty thing here in this huge God, there's nothing I can do that can hurt him, hurt God, won't say him, hurt God, the essence of God, no way. Therefore, that is one of the things we have been taught that just cannot be correct. And as I look at it in my own life, remembering I was part of that all my life previous as well. I can believe, how could I accept those two concepts without putting them together and say, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. This can't go. No. But we are not the only ones that never said, they can't go. Even the most intellectual people in the church, even the saints, never said that. Thomas Aquinas, for one. Bonaventure, another. And of course, the apostles. Okay. That is the only difference between us and God is proportion. In a sense, we are created by our parents, our human parents. And in a sense, the only difference between us and them is our physical body. However, they're about the same size. In greater light, in further light, but really the difference basically is the proportion. Because we have to admit, we look an awful like our mother and father. We look, we act an awful lot like them at times. We share an awful lot of their emotions and feelings and who they were, the good and the bad. We can't deny that. We were totally created by them. We did nothing but just receive from them. And they gave us everything they had, the good and the bad. And we grow from that. The same with our Heavenly Father and our Mother Sophia. They gave only what they are. And they're everything. And therefore, the same with us. We receive everything that they are. Everything. 
but we just are not the proportion, obviously. Okay. Put simply, God being, God's being, and our being then are one. Now, we can be accused of heresy. Can we? Well, we would be if we'd publicly proclaim this and so forth. But yet, as Neil points out, Isaiah in chapter 41, verse 23 says of God, show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that you are God's. He is quoting God saying to him, show the things that are to come hereafter so that everyone may know that you are God's. In the Psalm 8, or it's Psalm 82 and the sixth verse, we also read, I have said, God's you are and son of the most high, all of you. That word God's again. And in the gospel of St. John, the 10th chapter, the 34th verse, Jesus answers them saying, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. Well, obviously, we are gods because we were created by God. God can only create himself, the same as our human parents could only create themselves. And we are like our human parents. We're human. And we're like God, who is divine. We are gods. Okay, so our response to this invitation is that life is presenting all of us the making of a choice of who I am, who I, the physical person living in this being, who am I? I am an outpicturing of the divine. I am God in human form, as are all of us. And that's what Jesus was, God in human form. And the only difference between us and Jesus, again, is proportion. The God in him was the infinite God. The God in us Or, or the God in Jesus is the infinite person, God. In other words, the son of God was the person. Jesus is just a portion of that. The same as with us. And so what is this divine purpose of life then? The divine purpose of life is to express divinity in order that divinity may experience divinity in all of its aspects. God created everything that is created so that he could experience everything in him. And he experienced, he created us human beings and spiritual beings so that he could experience even more of himself 
in us. In short, God is using life in order to experience God's self. If we're all together in him, all tightly in him, it has to be an experience of himself. Well, look at us, how much we want to experience life in our body, that our body is an expression of the essence of ourselves. We take care of our body, we wash it, we decorate it, we dress well, all to express who we are through our body. We do the same thing as God. Divinity can be experienced though only through the expression of it. Nothing would it be experiencing anything if God had not created everything. God would not know anything if he did not create something. We can't say that the three persons were created. We just, they say they always have been, but each person expresses a different personality. Three personalities, all existing in this one essence of life's love. That is everything. Divinity can be imagined. Divinity can be thought about. It can be held in awareness by our soul, our spirit. But until divinity is expressed, it is merely a concept. And unless it is expressed, there is no way it can be experienced. The same within our thoughts. We can think all kinds of things, but unless they are expressed in some way, what we know is not experienced. That explains why we have the awareness that the best teachers we've ever had in our life, in our school, our university, is the professors who share intellectually who they are. They don't share just their knowledge, they share all they are. And that's a big difference. And we know the difference. That person is giving themselves to us. Experiencing. So that we can experience who they are. And that our knowledge becomes like theirs our very life. We can talk about love. We can imagine love. We can think about love. We can hold love as an idea conceptually. But until we express it, we cannot experience it. And life is love. It is love because life is divine. And there's only one life, that's God's. And there's only one love, and that's God's divine. Therefore, our life and our love is also divine.
that makes a big difference in who we really are. And even though there is so much negativity around us, that negativity is not destroying God. And it really is not destroying us. We think it is. And we can convince ourselves that it is. No. It is actually giving us the opportunity to grow in love. To grow more in the life that we are. Love. Because that's the only thing we basically can grow in. And that's what we have an eternity for. And it's also very obvious the present life we're living in just cannot be the only first time we've ever lived like this. Cannot be. God is infinite. What did he do in all this infinite time waiting for us to come into existence. And then we're only in existence for 70 years, 80, 90, and then bingo, we're out of existence. It doesn't make sense when we see this united in divinity that is infinite and eternal. Therefore, we have lived many lives before. And each of them has given us the opportunity to grow more in love, become more who we really are. And this is one the same. And the same is with the dark spirits. They cannot be separated eternally from the father and the mother. Created them. Impossible. Because that would make them totally infinite, proportionally equal to our Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. They can't. We cannot even be proportionally equal to our head, our earthly father and mother. No, we're only a portion of them. Not the total part. The same with those who created us. And therefore, someday, all the dark spirits are going to say, that's right. We're sorry, Father. We're sorry, Mother. And they'll be back. But there's an eternity of growth. Okay. And so who am I? What's the first question? We're quite something. And we're living that life. And we want to live it to its fullness. And so let's throw out of our mind and out of our feelings this negativity that our Heavenly Father and Mother are negative as well, like us, demanding laws and punishment for disobedience. No, that's us. Trying to make ourselves like them rather than becoming like them, who we already are, but being able to radiate that likeness, love. 
Amen. Amen. Okay, that's quite a bit. But... Very much. Yes, but. You've got to be on the level of experiences before I think you can understand some of the things you said. Nothing changes until an experience happens. Exactly, exactly. And when with what you have brought out today is a level that's much more, it's just not this little piece of that's all who we are. It's almost like we're little, little babies, you know, that never grew up. It just kind of twiddled a little bit. But with this, it turned around and it blossomed. And we never realized it. And uh, there's um, quite a teaching in this. And it'll take a while. You're bringing up one reason why I have added to my daily prayer that all those who have related to me in any way in my life mm -hmm. please come and spend this hour with me. And then I say, those who refuse to come and refuse to have a part, you've already related to me. I still bless you, but you won't take the blessing now. I put the blessing in your spiritual bank account so and, that it's there when you are ready to come. Exactly. And a lot of situations, and I've ran into this many times, and you did over the years, the people that we wanted to forgive or rework a situation, they want no part of it. They'll push you back and push you back. So... Um, We've come into a fake existence, I would call it. People are living in a fake existence in themselves. Yeah. So this is this is really what La Armita is about. Being it's available to give to others this experience that they're still loved regardless of who they are. Absolutely. And like, I'll never forget that transgender 50 year old woman who came and talked for two hours mm -hmm. of her life and then what she went through. Probably the first priest ever to talk to. Probably. And I gave her a hug at the end and three or four seconds after beginning to hug her, she cried for five or 10 minutes. And never, she said, have I experienced love like this. 50 years old, a transgender. I heard. Sex sexuality was very common but it never been used to express true love here. No, it has not. They're absolutely right. It has not from the very beginning of what we call original sin, but no, it has not. No, but she did and she's never come back. And I don't blame her for not coming back because I don't think she needs to come back. That mm -hmm. was enough to change. Mm -hmm. And that's all of us needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to share. It is, and it will get shared. Yes. That will get, it will be the lower meter that we're going to be built and will work its way into reality. And that's the pieces that we're looking for now, how we do that. How we and others do it. Who are the communities to start? And it will be done by sharing primarily 
Mother Sophia love. Yes. A mother's love gives each of us the feeling of being at home with ourselves. And that's it. Without that feeling, we can't start. No. We've got to feel at home with ourselves. That's correct. That comes from a mother. And a, and a mother that's got four or five, six children or whatever, she will tell you if she really is a mother. I can't treat that child like this child, this child, and this child. They understand different. They live different. They, they're, they're not like the rest of the family. You know, you hear all these statements made, but she's got that insight. You can't do that. That's yeah. making clones out of them and putting them in a situation. Well, that's what you gotta be. There's nothing else. No, no, Amen. it will not work. I only got two, but I've got 10 others around the house all the time. Now I'll start with my brothers and sisters, completely different and uh, it won't work. Amen. Amen is right. Okay. Very well done. Very well. Dad, Dad, Mother Sophia, and Brother Jesus, please continue to bless us all. May this message of yours of love, parental love, go forth and touch and give others, give all that experience of love. Amen. Amen.
on the night of his last supper, Jesus took bread and he offered it to our Father for his blessing. Then he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And then he took the cup with wine and he also offered it to our Father for his blessing. And then he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood. The blood is the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. And my beloved guardian angel, Jonathan Tom, please take this communion to all those who are with us this morning, even though they're here spiritually. Give it to them so that they too may be lost in that love with Jesus. Amen. Amen.
I lost the music. Can you hear me? But I lost the music. The last part of it. No, thank you, Dad, Mother Sophia, and Brother Jesus. Thank you for the day and let the spirit of love go forth within us now. And have a wonderful week ahead. And we ask this in your all's holy name. Amen. Amen. What happened?